What's up, Simp Squad, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Neological Experience. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so last week was a pretty controversial episode. We talked about free speech, censorship, big tech, politics. But apparently the most controversial thing we said is that pineapple does not belong on pizza. And the top comment on our podcast about politics and the censorship on social media <laughs> was that we should just have an entire episode about controversial food opinions. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Honestly. I'm a little bit hungry, so I'm not sure how this is going to go because it might just be salivating. Mm -hmm. Those are not good sounds, <laughs> I'm told, in the mic. No, to for salivate. ASMR people, does yeah. it ruin the sound? Yeah. No tea slurping. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into crowdsourcing some food opinions, and we'll just tell you whether people have good or bad taste or not, we'll just judge you, I have to call out Christine for her palate. I'm sorry? Your, your taste in food. Why? Because I think you have like the taste of a child when it comes to what food. What is that supposed <laughs> to mean, Ben? Okay, so... And uh, who are you to judge? Are you a chef? I mean, this, this episode is only going to be funny if we judge people, right? Okay, Put your yes, judgmental hat on now. That's what Ben thinks is funny when we judge people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Food so... taste is subjective, just uh, as a disclaimer, oh, okay. yeah, if, if I had to say that. <laughs> no one's getting their feelings hurt if we say it. Only okay. my taste buds. <laughs> okay, there was a Troom Troom video you did a few years ago, right? Maybe two years ago. I remember. You pranked me and you made a, me a sandwich that was peanut butter and mint sandwich. Like mint leaves on a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> it was good. And the joke was, oh, it's, it's terrible. And then like, I guess off camera, you just started eating it. And you're like, this is good. <laughs> like that's insane, right? Well, I like peanut butter and I like mint. So it was kind of, you know, like Troom Troom actually had a good idea. Like that can't be true. I mean. It was true to my mouth. <laughs> I think the, the thing about you is foods you like, you like just mixing them all together. Definitely. Like every time we eat dinner, you'll put your entire dinner in a bowl. Garbage bowl. Yeah. And just like everything gets mixed together. Whereas I like uh, keeping food separate, compartmentalizing, you know, this bite is mashed potatoes. This bite is But that's is not chicken. logical because all of that food is going to mix together anyways in your stomach. In your stomach. Yeah, well, yeah, it's all going to <laughs> the same place. But you see what I'm place. saying? Sometimes I think the way you eat food or organize food says a lot about the way you organize your life. Oh, okay. Let's get deep about this. <laughs> so Ben likes to look at things in different segments. Like he'll he'll look at this part of his life and take it for what it is, and then he'll move on to the next and think whatever about something else. Whereas I look at the whole picture, oh, oh, and I you? I just put it all in the same bowl because it's all going to end up in the same place. <laughs> okay the, the the comments can tell us who is right or wrong about this like i understand what you're saying that i just like different foods and i like them all at the same time but i can't relate to that you know i like mint i like peanut butter i don't like them together you mix like like you'll have greek yogurt which is like a sour tasting thing and put it in something like sweet and like chocolatey that's the compliment. That's like literally what a chef says to do. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm not a chef, but I know that's what they say. Like sweet cherry tarts or something. There's like sweet and sour. That's a thing. Yeah, but like, okay, yeah, like sweet and sour chicken balls, like American sweet Chinese. Sweet and sour pork uh, is not a thing. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But, but not sweet <laughs> and sour. What's sweet and sour pork? I don't even know. Okay. Well, okay, that's me calling you out. I thought it'd be funnier if we exposed our own. Do you think I have, like, I don't think I have bad food takes. I think your taste in food is generally fine. The one thing that I will say is weird is when you eat entire tubs of hummus, like, on its own. Like, Ben will go to the grocery store and buy five tubs of hummus, and you'd think he was feeding a family of 17 for, a, like, a, a weekend barbecue. I'm just feeding myself but in, 17 times. But in fact, times. he just takes a spoon sometimes not even a spoon maybe it's just your hands i no. I, I don't know <laughs> i kind of witness it because i turn around and poof the hummus tub is gone and he'll just eat hummus like by itself right yeah but so this is very judgmental of you i think there's a silent majority of people who would be happy to eat hummus on their own and the only reason they don't is that people like you <laughs> Shut up. 
are keeping us in the shadows. <laughs> hey, hummus is fine, but everything in moderation. Well, see, that's the weird thing. Like, it's kind of gross to eat that's a not tub me, of hummus like, for lunch. I'm not mixing hummus and chocolate, like Maybe something that's just objectively <laughs> bad. I just have a thing I like, and I like eating a lot of it. But that's not good for like a healthy, you know, balanced, uh, what you should eat in a day. <laughs> what I eat in a day. If you ever did a what I eat in a day, it would just be like a picture Rich of a tub of hummus. hummus. I, okay, here, I'll concede a point to you. There is such a thing as eating too much hummus. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I've ever... Is, is that point coming then? Are we there yet? <laughs> I've discovered that point long ago when I was a younger man. How long have we been dating? What? Where is this going? <laughs> We've been dating know, like eight, eight, years. eight years. So you're not going to break up with me at this point based on a story about hummus, right? Well, I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no promises? I don't know. I, okay. I'm not so, signing anything. There's no verbal okay, contract. I'll, this is funny. Whatever. It was a long time. Uh, when I was a younger man and like disgusting, living a disgusting lifestyle, uh -huh. uh, sometimes people now ask me like why I don't just make my own hummus in a food processor. And it's because when I did do that... And I was just a lazy student who didn't really get groceries. And I just had, you know, one giant batch of hummus I made. I would literally eat that for like meals in a row. And that would be like my entire dinner would be just like a big bowl of hummus. With nothing in it? Like you Well, sometimes dip? I'd add like Greek yogurt. Maybe there'd be pita. Maybe there, there wouldn't be. But uh, it got to a point once where I guess I just eaten too much of it. And I agree. There is a point at which you've just consumed too many... Uh, chickpeas i guess and i remember there was a <laughs> there is a carbon monoxide detector right outside my bathroom ew but those things stop. also have a detector for gas leaks <laughs> and i remember one time the alarm went off on the carbon monoxide detector just so we're clear what what exactly <laughs> Do you want me to be more clear than that because of hummus? Well, just, I guess I was going to the bathroom and, uh, you know. So yeah. didn't this turn you off of hummus? Oh my well, God. now I eat it in moderation. I'll only eat like one tub a day. You say what you, <laughs> this is not moderation, Ben. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to have to revisit our relationship. Divorce. Divorce. <laughs> All righty then. Let's look at your controversial food opinions. And this is where we judge people. You have to be judgmental, Christine. You can't be nice. This is going to be tough. If someone says they like pickles and they're wrong, you tell them you have bad taste and you're a bad person. <laughs> All right. First one from Simply Tea Logical. I hate ranch, but so many people love it. Is it just me? This, other than pineapple and pizza, this was probably the most common one we got. People either saying they love ranch, they put it on everything, they put it on pizza, or people like Simply Tea Logical here who uh, think ranch is disgusting. I hate ranch. You what hate about you? ranch? Yeah, I don't like it. See, like, I'm kind of indifferent to ranch. Like, I can have it, but I really don't understand people who want to put it on everything. What is ranch, though? Like, is it mayo? Like, what is the basis like of ranch dressing? Man. I've never made it. Yeah, I don't even really know. All I know is uh, Cool Ranch Doritos are the most delicious Doritos. Well, those Does are good, count? but that's not like <laughs> thick, white, creamy ranch dressing yeah. that people put on like barbecue ribs. I don't know. <laughs> that's <laughs> you have probably no a idea, stereotype. Right? <laughs> so you, you hate ranch? Uh, like ranch dressing, for example, if it's an option on a salad, I do not want that. I would much rather like a balsamic vinaigrette or oh, something. foofy, really fancy. Well, just like anything. I do, not, not ranch. Anything but ranch. <laughs> basically just like putting mayonnaise tangy mayonnaise it's just on so things. thick and it distracts from the actual food that you're eating i find so it's not i'm not a fan here's the thing so i'm kind of indifferent to ranch but uh i think the sister of ranch or the older uglier sister of ranch is uh blue cheese <laughs> uh dip dipping sauces and stuff and some people pretend they're so sophisticated because they dip their chicken wings in uh uh blue cheese is blue, no, is ranch blue cheese? No, 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 no. no, no. Is ranch cheese? <laughs> this is <laughs> going to be a great conversation. <laughs> anyway, sorry, where I was going with that yeah. before you asked if ranch is cheese <laughs> is that I think blue cheese is disgusting. Yeah, and anyone I, I, who says they like it is just pretending. Because no one tries blue cheese for the first time and is like, oh, this is so delicious. Well, maybe they just like old things. It's like saying you like a house that's really old because it has character, but like actually it's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, you want to, speaking of old people, my grandmother 
once made a sour cream peach pie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess I like, she's, she baked it. We're, we're, we're all eating it. And I guess I got the first slice and I take a bite and I go, oh, that's disgusting. And my mom's like, Ben, don't say that. And then she takes a bite and she's like, oh, this is really bad. And we go like, oh, there's something wrong with the pie. And my grandmother goes, oh, you know, like the sour cream, there was all this mold on it, but I just scooped it off and I thought what was underneath would be fine. <laughs> Ew, Ben. <laughs> Some old people are just that like can, that. But that can make you really sick, right? Like, maybe I'm completely wrong. And I know that there's definitely some kind of grace period. Like, if yogurt expires, it could be fine the next day. I don't know. Sure. But uh, how long was the expiry date before? Well, I have no idea. If, if it was, if there was, was a it like lot last of mold year? on top of it. I don't think you can just scoop off the top layer of growth. I don't think you can either. But Maybe uh, she was trying to kill me. Were you sick? No, I, I think I was fine after. <laughs> I've survived. I'm here to did she, tell the tale. Did she eat it? <laughs> I, I think she did, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> Grandma, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one from Insanity Polish. Woo. Uh, Sorry. Brussels sprouts are hands down one of the best vegetables. Agreed. Is it true or false? Absolutely true. Is it true? I love Brussels sprouts. I am disgusting. <laughs> am I crazy? So I'm not a big fan of Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you're just wrong. I'm not a, like I'll eat green vegetables, but Brussels With, sprouts is it, pretty far down the list green. of vegetables. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, I understand that. To me, do you find this that sometimes like the inside of a Brussels sprout almost has like a horseradishy kind of taste? Do you know what I mean? It's like when some lettuce is a bit more bitter. Is that what you mean by like horseradishy? It's just like a bit of a bitter. It's not lettuce. just bitter though. There's something strange. Well, about maybe it. it's just how you prepared the Brussels sprouts or how I prepared the Brussels sprouts because I guess I'm the one preparing them. So that is a really good point. When it comes to a lot of vegetables that people think they hate, a lot of the time it's because your parents were probably actually bad at cooking. And they probably <laughs> steamed them and that's it and added no salt, no yeah, pepper, like people no are like, oil. I hate kale or broccoli. Like if you've ever gone to a restaurant that knows what they're doing, yeah, can actually make those things taste really good. So hypothetically, so could you at home. I used to hate vegetables or anything that was green too. I mean, like so did everyone pretty much until you grew up, became an adult and realized like I should eat these things for my health. But that doesn't mean you like them. Are you just no, eating now them because like they're healthy? I, I eat them because they're healthy, but I've also learned to like them, including Brussels sprouts. When you make them crispy in the oven, it's so good. I cook all my green veggies and just all, basically all veggies in the oven. I just throw them on um, tin foil with some olive oil. And it's pretty basic. And a lot of garlic. A, a ton of garlic, yeah. salt, pepper, and maybe some extra spice blend. Maybe it's like a garlic lover's spice blend. or mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. I don't like pay that much attention. So I just sprinkle shit on it and put it in the oven and then roast it and then flip them and then roast it again. And sometimes I'll put it on broil. Mm -hmm. So it'll make it even crispier and mm, little crispy Brussels sprouts, delicious. I will say crispy Brussels sprouts, maybe a little bacon. Crispy wrap. kale. Oh, it's the best. Yes. It's like kale chips. Or with kale, you, you need to massage your kale. I never do that because I don't want to do that to my nails. <laughs> Unless I'm massaging them in like jojoba oil, which I don't think you should eat. Can I don't want to rub oil <laughs> all around. <laughs> all right. Uh, from... I uh, pickles are underrated. Are they underrated, or I, don't I think, think they're, they're widely accepted? Yeah, there. Well, there's like a camp of people who really like putting pickles on everything, and that to me is a little strange because a pickle is such a strong flavor; it really just dominates what's I love what it's pickles. on. Yeah, I mean dill pickles, only dill, pi dill garlic pickles. Mm. Dill as opposed to what? Do you want to know a funny story? Sure. I don't know if this is this is maybe not. Tell funny, me. Yeah. But I went to camp with a girl whose grandfather, I think, was the guy who made Strub's pickles. Oh. So her last name was Strub's or Strub. Oh, wow. I, she got actually, that I'm not even sure. Pickle, pickle money. But she she, she was the pickle girl. <laughs> Did people call her that? Yeah. That's kind of sad. But I love Strub's pickles growing up. And then I met her and I'm like, oh my God, the spawn of Strub. It's like the first so celebrity cool. you ever met. The spawn <laughs> like, of Strub. <laughs> You know what's the thing about pickle people too? I mean, like, uh, have you ever kissed a girl whose breath tastes like pickles? Uh, I have, and it was you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <my kiss. laughs> what? 
when? Well, I don't. Okay, pickles aren't underrated. I don't think, but I'm. I don't get the people who love pickles. I I am one of those people. Hey, I don't get you. I eat pickles, but like sometimes when we're cooking dinner and I'm hungry and it's not ready yet, I'll just grab the jar of dill pickles and just eat one. How do you be... feel? How do you feel about pickle juice? Because some freaks out there are just Wanna drinking drink the brine out of the jar. I like the smell of it, and I feel like it could be a good like dressing. <laughs> dressing. <laughs> but, but I I don't drink it. No. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from uh, Carolyn, uh, pineapple on pizza. It's amazing. Mm. Had to throw one of these in just because there were so many people. I think our feeling, feelings, <laughs> our feelings, our feelings are already <laughs> known about this. Yeah, I like pizza. Actually, I don't really eat pizza anymore. But back in the day when I used to order pizza, I it was always like pepperoni pizza, extra mm-hmm. cheese, maybe some black olives for sure, um, sausage, that kind of stuff. Goat yeah. cheese, I used to love that. Spinach. Mm-hmm. Delicious. But pineapple, like I like pineapple, but just not on my pizza. Yeah, I just think there's so many better things to put on pizza. I've seen the argument for pineapple and jalapeno and like, you know, I believe that people have tasted those things and they are good. But I just think there are so many better pizza combinations to mm-hmm. go with. I think the more uh, the more uh, legitimate debate about pizza might be like the thin crust versus thick crust divide. Ottawa, where we live is pretty known for having uh, a lot of our pizza places are like known for Lebanese style pizza, I guess they call it. I guess it just happens to be. What does that mean? So you tend to have much thicker crusts. I think the sauce is generally pretty sweet. And the main issue I see is just uh, how cheesy it is. Like there's one famous pizza place in Ottawa called Colonnade. And the amount of cheese they put on the pizza is is absurd and frankly kind of gross, I find anyway. I, feel... I prefer a very thin crust, crispy, you only have to put it in the oven for like 90 seconds at a very high temperature and something like that, like Roberto's on Preston Street or Anthony's in Wellington, you know, that, that, that's No one knows what you're talking about. Okay, some <laughs> Ottawa people will know what I'm talking about. But are you a thin crust or thick crust person? What you just said of the thick cheese, that reminded me of the last time I had pizza. It was one of those like really thick cheese places. And I was just like, I can't eat this anymore. It's just literally all cheese. I can't do it anymore. That's the last time you had. Yeah, we I don't, think so. We that, don't really that's my pizza. last memory of, of ordering like a whole pizza and eating like three slices. You just don't really like eating bread anymore, I guess, right? Not really. Yeah. I kind of want to get a pizza oven. They have ones you can get now. Uh, like uni pizza ovens, like small ones in your home that get really hot so you can actually make But there's no point that. in making a pizza unless you have like eight friends over and that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, please don't buy a pizza Can't oven. Can we have a pizza party for two? No? <laughs> no. It's just, just going to be a waste. Unless we make tuna pizza, feed it to the cats. All right, moving okay, on. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, from Forever After Nails, I hate mint, peppermint, <gasps> mint chocolate, mint, anything. I also hate gum of any flavor. The texture makes me gag. I often feel left out in these opinions. I mean, I don't think you're alone in disliking mint. What? I think she's alone. <laughs> she's the only person in, in human history that's I've ever... I've never heard someone say they hate mint. I understand people say, like, I wouldn't mix mint with banana or mint with peanut butter. But how can you hate mint on its own? Yeah, that is pretty weird. Sounds I, like discrimination to I me. think there are way more people who love mint and chocolate mint than there are people who don't like it. I think so. Yeah, mm-hmm. like mint chocolate is one of the best food combinations in the entire universe. Absolutely. As evidenced by my mint chocolate oats that I've been making for years. Mm-hmm. And just earlier I had a, a mint chocolate spinach smoothie. <laughs> it sounds gross. <laughs> it does sound but gross. But you don't taste the spinach at all. Like, it's just, you don't taste it. Mint is a really great flavor for uh, masking other flavors, too. It really kind of takes over. Yeah. But, like, a really intense uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, it's so good. Delicious. Or just mint dark chocolate is the best. Or if you take real fresh mint leaves and layer them on dark chocolate. Oh, you just okay, eat, now I'm hungry. Just eat the leaf? <laughs> sure. That's, <laughs> just, that's weird. Just eat the leaf. <laughs> I can kind of get behind this person when it comes to gum, though. 
I used yeah. to chew a lot of gum, and I think Same. I started feeling like it was kind what of What happened? I used to be like a gum addict. Anytime I got in the car, I needed a piece of gum. Maybe that's because I used to drive like five hours back and forth between Toronto and Ottawa yeah. quite often, several times so a year. just a way of keeping you it awake? Was literally a way of staying awake. I'm like chewing. I'm like... Arr, arr. And then my right. jaw would hurt, but... <laughs> that's an interesting point. When I chewed a lot of gum too, I felt like it was more of a compulsive thing. Like, so I'd yeah. get a pack of gum at work, and I would just like pop them... Yeah. I would go through a pack in like an afternoon. I remember my, my supervisor being like, are you why okay? do you, what's <laughs> up? Like, why are you chewing so much gum? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I definitely used it as like when I was traveling, if I was driving, I needed gum to like stay awake, which was makes no sense. Was else but... in the car? No. You were alone. I was often driving back and forth alone. This was gotcha. before your time. Because <laughs> I will say like traveling or being around people who are constantly chewing gum, big no-no. Yes, that I agree. I don't chew gum at work. Wait, you chew gum at work? Yeah. That's really annoying. You are one of those people, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> so annoying. Uh, okay, I'm annoying with my nails. This is true. All right, next one from Karen M. Uh, French fries with mayo and ketchup. Uh, I'm assuming they're saying this is a good thing and not a bad thing. This is pretty normal, isn't it? Yeah, but I thought it would be interesting to put this one in because the mayo and ketchup thing... I thought it was a very French Canadian thing that when you order French fries at a diner, if you're in Quebec, uh, the default is to give you mayo with those fries instead of ketchup. Yeah. And I actually prefer mayo with fries over ketchup, especially if it's like a garlicky mayo or maybe even a spicy mayo. Maybe it's sweet potato fries. I like garlic mayo. Mm -hmm. I just think that, I guess from a health perspective, sorry, I know. <laughs> That like Which having healthier. all of that extra mayo would make me want to dip every fry in the mayo. And do I really need that much mayo? Probably mayo. not. But that much ketchup, the same amount in ketchup, like wouldn't really be as bad for you. Ooh, I don't think I, I agree know with gonna that. I know you're going to say ketchup is sugar, but it's just Ketchup less... is just full of sugar. Yeah, I guess. Right? Like, like little kids who love ketchup and want to put ketchup in everything. It's basically because ketchup tastes like candy to them. Mm -hmm. Heinz did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, that wanted to maximize sales sugar. <laughs> and get that revenue from those kids. But I'm team uh, mayo with French fries over ketchup. Mm. Case closed. Uh, all right, next one from Idiotic Blondie. Uh, ketchup and fries, no. But what? Ice cream, milkshake, and fries, yes. Okay, I know the ice cream uh, or like the Wendy's Frosty kind of mixed with fries. Well, yeah. is a is a thing that some people like i did that i love that but how can you say no to ketchup and fries i feel like you, those kinds of people would i do think both. ketchup and fries is kind of overrated but there's you know two kinds of people in the world people who have tried dipping salty french fries into a milkshake and those who haven't why haven't people tried I don't know. Some people just have their eyes closed but and they're they, going through life with blinders And they on. don't know that it's, they don't know. it's either good or gross. It's funny you say Wendy's milkshake because I think that's such a classic thing. I wonder... The if, Wendy's frosty. Is that something to do with our culture? Is that a Canadian thing? Or do uh, Americans also know that something about those really thick Wendy's frosties that were like almost like gelatinous. They were so thick, but dipping the really salty French fries in those... Didn't we used to do that with McDonald's twist cones, or am I making that up too? We? I mean, we didn't grow up together, so I don't know. <laughs> like people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do not know that. Basically, this is just reminds me of our childhood of eating fast food. Like, we ate, <laughs> ate a lot of milkshakes, a lot of twist cones from McDonald's, and a lot of really salty french fries. I would love to see a fine dining restaurant sort of have their own sophisticated take on the french fry and ice cream uh, dessert. French fry au gratin du sel. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. Uh, all right, next one from Rand Cash. Raisins. I do not understand how anyone could like raisins. They're just a bunch of gooey messes <laughs> invading my dessert. <laughs> Please, let's cancel raisins from now on. Nothing ruins my day like a raisin dessert infestation. You know, she's not wrong. I think raisins should be canceled. They should be called out. I think they ruin dessert. But if you just handed me a little box of raisins and i'm in the second grade and I'll throw my, it at it's, you. it's a little snack <laughs> <You'll throw> it. <laughs> if you give me raisins for halloween throw that shit back on your front Wait, porch sorry do, when you were a kid was this a thing did you get like a little boxes yeah. of raisins the little yeah. red boxes with the lady in the like apron or something on lady? them oh they did have a there lady. was a lady on them but there were also commercials that featured like raisin people trying to convince you that you should eat raisins why are raisins healthy or something <laughs> Who's behind this? I mean, they're also sweet. They're just shriveled up 
dehydrated grapes, right? So why would anyone be attracted to a shriveled up dehydrated something? I think it's kind of brilliant. They're just trying to get rid of like probably grapes they couldn't sell. Is that so where raisins come from? they're old <laughs> grapes that, that didn't make it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't love raisins. <laughs> I can eat raisins on their own, but I totally agree that raisins are a fruit in general I don't like in desserts. Like uh, I really like carrot cake, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't fuck with recipes that want to add raisins to a carrot cake. I hate when you order like couscous or something and there's raisins in it. Like, why did they do that? Because like, I love the, the couscous or the quinoa or the uh -huh. kind of alternative grains, why? you know, on, on my plate. I love that. I uh -huh. add it to my garbage bowl salad. Uh -huh. And then there's when there's raisins in it, I'm like, why you got to do that to me? Then I have to pick them out. They get stuck under my nails. Like, it's gross. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from Amy T, uh, hear me out, bacon is disgusting. I kind of agree. Really? Yeah. Oh, so we don't really eat a lot of bacon. So we're not vegan or vegetarian. We no. do eat meat. Um, I would say we're, we're uh, how do you put this? We're sympathetic to people who uh, uh, don't eat meat out of ethics ethical concerns i totally agree with that and as much mm -hmm. as possible i think it's important to try to get if you are going to eat meat maybe consider eating less of it or maybe trying to pick uh what's the way of there are more ethical ways of raising livestock and harvesting meat than factory sure, sure, farms sure. that are terrible yeah. yada 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 we eat meat but not a ton of meat i would say right so sorry to cut you off there no i was just gonna say like even as someone who I eat meat. I bacon is just gross. Like it to me, it's it's like the fat that gets all bubbly when you cook it, and there is nothing appealing about it. Isn't to that me. what people love about bacon? I just guess, but and... I personally like. Why do I want the fat, weird part of the animal? Like to me, that's not appetizing. Because <laughs> it's, it's the most delicious part. But like, not really. Okay, that's fine. Whatever works for you. It's not the most like. It's not the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like nu nutritional part. It's it's not the oh, best no. part. No you know one's I mean? eating bacon and going, oh, this, this is so nutritious. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever met, who is it? Is it your sister's boyfriend? Who's like needs to put bacon and hot sauce on everything? Or is it bacon or cheese? I think he puts cheese on everything and like sour cream. Cheese? Or was it bacon? I can't remember. I think it was bacon and mustard. Mustard. Yeah, for it was sure, mustard, yeah. right? Yeah, that guy's got the taste of he's like not, a five-year-old. He's not wrong about the mustard, though. I love <laughs> he's mustard. He's not wrong too. about mustard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Uh, I really dislike cheese, so I have cheese rules. What are the rules? <laughs> uh, cheese is good on pizza, nachos, or pasta, but that's about it. Uh, there's exceptions to that, too, though. Uh, the cheese can't be the main flavor, like a cheese pizza or mac and cheese. Or just eating cheese, like, on a block of cheese. Uh, I don't have a dairy allergy, but cheese has always made me really ill when it's more than a little. I agree with this. There's hmm. definitely such a thing as too much cheese, especially, like, we already brought up too much cheese on pizza, on pizza is a bad yeah. thing. Cheese should be kind of like a, a compliment to whatever meal. Maybe you've shred some cheese on something or added it on the side, it treated it as, as kind of a dressing, almost. Mm -hmm. I, I agree to that. Like I feel weird after eating cheese, especially if it's a lot of it. Maybe. I think a lot are of are you lactose intolerant? What's the thing? I think a lot of people are lactose intolerant, but they just accept it because cheese is delicious, <laughs> right? Like sure. I used to eat a lot of. Uh, I would get these uh, sesame bagels, like melt aged cheddar on them mm. with uh, green olives. Oh, so good. That sounds really good. It was really good. Actually, here's a question: bagels. 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 Are you a uh, uh, Montreal or New York style bagel person. What's the difference? I think again? this is the distinction people argue about. So, uh, Montreal style, the bagels tend to be a little sweeter, and visually, you would notice that they don't rise as much. They're denser and usually a little smaller. Whereas, like, New York style is generally like puffier, mm -hmm. more bready, I would say. I think when I used to eat a lot of bagels and bread, like uh -huh. in university, I would go for the, the puffier, fluffier one. And Wrong put, answer. And put a lot of cream cheese on it and toast it. That's how I would eat my bagels. Yeah. I, oof. I, I don't know if this is going to work out. <laughs> well, Montreal style, I think, I don't is really the eat bagels anymore. Well, you don't so, even really so bread. So we can keep dating. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad. 
Uh, next one from Fion Plans. Uh, pretzel chips and applesauce is always a good idea. I've never heard that one before. I don't even really understand how you would eat these things together. Do you put pretzel? the pretzels you in the bowl of applesauce and just mix it around? Or what you... if they get soggy? They would, right? Do you think she's just dipping the pretzel in the applesauce? Or maybe she has a bowl of applesauce. She throws the pretzels in like it's cereal and then eats it with a spoon. Have you eaten applesauce since you were like six years old? Because I definitely <laughs> <No>. haven't. <laughs> um, yeah, good point. I don't think so. I might have put it in a smoothie once. I think a smoothie recipe called for applesauce. Uh, okay. Yeah, weird. I mean, pretzel chips and applesauce is fine. I think they probably taste fine together. I'd, I'd mix them and eat yeah. them together. Whatever makes you I'd happy. I'd throw them in a blender. <laughs> uh, from Who's Astoria, uh, cheese and mustard sandwiches are my comfort food. That sounds good. Only cheese and mustard, though? Nothing else? Maybe not. Is the cheese melted? Is it a grilled cheese with mustard? Is that better or worse? I like mustard tastes and mustard and vinegar, that kind of like... I, don't I, know I get that, but I feel it. like a sandwich needs more than just cheese and mustard pickles. to be good. <laughs> just yeah, cheese, mustard, and pickles. <laughs> All right, good luck with that. Uh, from Hey, It's Jennifer, uh, I love peanut butter on a cheeseburger. What? You put it between the burger patty and the cheese, and it gives an amazing, indescribable, delicious flavor and texture. Didn't a local Ottawa restaurant try this? So I've heard of this before. Yeah. The Works in Ottawa has mm -hmm. a burger on the menu with peanut butter. I've never tried it. But I know it exists beyond that, clearly. Is it advertised as like a dessert burger, though? Like no, a, is there chocolate I... or something else to it? Like ice cream on the side or something? No, I think they're they're literally saying it just gives this weird nutty compliment flavor to a, to a burger. I could kind of see it. I'm be, I would be curious to try it. Well, you like peanut butter with everything. That's not true. Yes, it is. You spoon, I like peanut butter. You spoon a big scoop of peanut butter on your oats that yeah, already have peanut butter in them. <laughs> So I like peanut butter, but I don't like it on everything. I mm -hmm. like it in my oats that already have a peanut butter as an ingredient. Sure. I like a little extra peanut butter. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is that okay? Would you try peanut butter on a burger? Peanut no. butter and meat? No, I'm not good. <laughs> I don't really gonna... like burgers to begin with. Yeah. Like beef burgers. Or just red meat in general. Yeah, right? I don't really care for red meat. Like, I hear burger and I'm, like, not interested. However, when I was 20 years old and drunk, oh, yeah? then I would eat what? a lot of, like, McDonald's burgers. <laughs> <laughs> what was your order? Do you remember? Oh, uh, I don't. You don't nope, remember I don't those remember, nights at all? <laughs> but I definitely got, like, a Big Mac uh, with, like, the special sauce and, you know, the uh, fries. Double cheeseburger dress is a Big Mac. You yeah, don't need that something extra like that. One in the I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. Man, I haven't had McDonald's. Chicken in like nuggets. A, when was the last? Chicken time? nuggets dipped in honey. Oh, that's. You ever do that? That's basic. They're they're McDonald's kind of freaks me out, especially their other meats. Is it meat? Well, they're chicken nuggets too. Didn't she like? Yeah, I, I remember know. that viral thing where it was like there was a head. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. We shouldn't I don't know spread if it's rumors, true either. But, uh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, from Emma's Christine, <laughs> broccoli is good. I agree. I agree with you, Emma's Emily. Christine. Nothing else to say here. Uh, from Blueberry Ice Tea, M&M's and orange juice. Wait, so you drop M&M's in orange juice? Actually, I wonder if the acidity of the orange juice makes the coating of the M&M kind of disintegrate and turn colors and the dye leaks out. That'd be a fun experiment. Uh, I think this is a terrible idea and you should be ashamed of yourself for commenting it. <laughs> Why? Well, they're saying it's Tusk's Rebellion's creation. I'm being dramatic, oh. but this sounds terrible to me. But what if it's cool, like a science experiment? It's not cool. How do you know? <laughs> you never tried it. You can't have... Have you ever had chocolate right after drinking something really sweet? Doesn't work. Orange juice isn't that sweet. Orange juice is very sweet. It's definitely sweet. Only if it's like a Florida orange. No, if it's any <laughs> orange. It's like, like a... Forget orange juice. Like if you had like a Pepsi and then a mm -hmm. chocolate right after. The Pepsi is so sweet that you'll eat the chocolate after and your mouth doesn't know how to interpret the sweetness of the chocolate But that's anymore. because Pepsi is full of like aspartame and garbage. And then when you contrast that with the real sugar, like natural. So you think this, this might actually complement it better? I, I guess I, I like, uh, I'll eat a Terry's chocolate orange. Mm -hmm. So a fruity chocolate flavor can work. But the, the candy of the M&M, &M, to me, I just can't imagine working with 
orange juice. Yeah, my reaction to this isn't like, oh, that must taste good. It was more like, oh, what happens during this experiment? Because do, do you think it blows up? <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of want to know what, <laughs> like, what happens if you put a skittle in an orange juice? Does it start to fizz well, you and the think color it's like comes Mentos. off? <laughs> yeah, like Mentos, but but colors with M and M's coating. Anyways, I'm interested. Well, maybe we'll try it. <laughs> Uh, all right, from Lara F40, uh, cheddar cheese and chocolate. Excuse me? Yeah, you're going to have to see yourself out. <laughs> uh, from Kim Smiles Too Much, popcorn with ketchup. As a child, I was obsessed with putting ketchup on different things. Yeah, because it's sugar. Uh, but popcorn and ketchup is the one weird thing I still enjoy as a young adult. So do you remember, well, in Canada, people know ketchup chips. That's true. That's a huge thing. It's a stereotype. I liked uh, them. I grew up eating ketchup chips. Um, but I, ketchup chips was like um, a very disintegrated kind of powder. It's not actually like coated wet ketchup. So when she <laughs> says ketchup popcorn, I wonder, does she mean like the ketchup powder that's basically just like salty or... It sounds like Kim is literally just squirting, squirting ketchup, ketchup into her popcorn. Yeah, that's, that would make it soggy. Yeah, I'd be a little more inclined to try it if it was just like a dusting of ketchup flavor, like the chips are. But yeah. first, I at the movies. This is such a Canadian stereotype: the ketchup chips. Can, there aren't like, I don't even think it's a super popular flavor in Canada. For some reason, it just only exists in Canada and not the states. Or that was the case for a while, anyway. I really liked them. You like ketchup chips? They they don't really taste like ketchup. They taste like like salt and vinegar almost. Well. What? No. There are salt and vinegar chips and there are ketchup chips. But they're just like the are red. Are you sure you were eating ketchup chips? They're just chips? the red versions. <laughs> Give me the red know. chip. What it's is good. what's your favorite potato chip? Probably salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar, that's a good yeah. choice. Like a Ms. Vicky's salt and vinegar. Yeah. That's but good. not the jalapeno ones or the spicy ones. I hate spicy. Jalapeno chips might be my answer. No, incorrect. And do Doritos are just, uh, when I was younger, I, I used to eat a cool lot of ranch. Doritos. The cool Ranch, especially. <laughs> Maya, have I ever told you this? My aunt, my, my uncle's wife, I think she's still his wife. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she was an ad executive for uh, the parent company of Doritos, I guess Frito Lay or something. Okay. And I guess she was very involved when, remember when we were kids, Doritos had those commercials? Where, like, you'd have some guy, he bites the chip, and, like, the whole store explodes. Yeah. And it's like, you're a badass. Who cares that your chip's loud? <laughs> Apparently, she had a <laughs> big role in crunch, those yeah. commercials. Yeah, and I thought that was such a big deal when mm. I was younger. But, yeah, I've always felt a little bit of a personal connection to Doritos. Nom nom. Nom nom. Uh, from Ash Logical, Pickles on Pizza. <laughs> I've never... I've never heard of that, but you know what? I don't think I'm that mad at it. <laughs> Because imagine, okay. Maybe hold it's on. a pizza burger. Can I have an idea? Okay, okay, lay it on me. Shoot, Give it to everyone me. Everyone, listen. <laughs> you know how we cut pickles horizontally, like into slices, as if you were going to put that on a burger. Mm -hmm. What if you cut it the other way into circles, like you would cut cucumber circles, and then you put them on a pizza like pepperoni, so they look like little circles, like but that's as if the pepperoni same, would. It's the same way as them on the burger, the circular. Pickles no. are circular on a burger. No, pickles are cut lengthwise into like long strips and then you like three in a row. Oh, okay. So but what if you cut them the other way into like circles, thin circles, yes, like like, like you would cut a cucumber. And uh, then when you put them on the pizza, they just look like green pepperonis. It would probably still be disgusting. No. <laughs> you know, I kind of, I think I might want to try a pizza. Maybe you can get that oven. Get that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> get that pizza oven. <laughs> Ash Logical, thank you for the idea. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on from No Way Not Not. Uh, I eat my poutine with ketchup instead of the sauce. Y'all can hate the bad Quebec person I am. I mean, that's not that abnormal, is it? To add oh. a bit of ketchup, is it? Maybe. Okay, I'm... so poutine. Je m'excuse, je suis pas francophone. We're talking about French fries, gravy. It doesn't have to be a meat gravy. It could be a mushroom gravy. And cheese curds. And cheese curds. If and, you replace and tomatoes. What's wrong with that? Tomato no. Tomatoes or ketchup. <laughs> if you replace the gravy with ketchup. Well not replace, just add. No, she says instead of the sauce. Oh, well then it's not a poutine anymore. Yeah. It's just adding cheese curds to your fries and ketchup. Which sounds great. 
No, that does not sound good. What's wrong with french fries that are like salty potatoes with tomatoes and cheese? Sounds like a sandwich to me. <laughs> What's the sandwich part? Tomato and cheese <laughs> and bread. Hard disagree. Hard pass on this, no way. Uh, from Liz Farrell. Uh, watermelon milkshakes are really good. Mm. I tried it in North Carolina at one of the 100 flavor shake shops. <laughs> My family thinks I'm crazy and I like a lot of word combos, but trust me, they are both good. That ah. sounds so good. I've made a watermelon shake a long time ago. But what's the point of... I mean, eat... what's the point? No, okay, hear me. <laughs> Eating a watermelon is basically like having a watermelon shake. Well, no. You when I mean? when you chew and when you just swallow. No, okay, you bite a watermelon and it's basically disintegrating in your mouth. But it turns into just like water. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> yeah. if you put watermelon in a shake, presumably you've added some like vanilla or banana or something to make it more or like almond milk to make it a bit creamier. It's actually quite delicious. Uh, I don't think I agree. Like a watermelon ice cream. Why doesn't that Why? exist? Because no one would want it because that sounds bad. No, it sounds so good. <laughs> I want to make a watermelon shake now. That's my next thing. Can you, next time you go to the grocery store, can you get a watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, dear. <laughs> uh, all right. Next one from Tay. Another watermelon opinion. They think watermelon is overrated. Uh, I know some people love it and swear when it's good, it's so good. But 99% of the time, mm. it's bland and underripe and just not worth the flavor gamble. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is a far more constant and superior melon. I think this, I hear you because it really matters where you live. Many times I've bought watermelon in mm -hmm. somewhere in Canada and uh, it's been underripe and just not good. And it's pr pretty unfortunate. However, when I've been to, I don't know, Florida or the, the odd time I was in the tropics and I had watermelon or like something like a mango and it was so good. Like that's mm -hmm. the fruit you want to eat. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say, uh, if we're talking about what's the best melon, honeydew is the money melon, and everyone oh, knows I it. Oh, I love honeydew. Yeah. Oh, that's that's got to be my favorite melon. <laughs> All right, next one. Let's move on. Uh, from Lelia, uh, my husband hates extreme combos of sweet and savory, like bacon and ice cream. I think I agree with that. Uh, they, I personally don't like extreme sweets, but for example, the ice cream burrito, it's an insult to the burrito and it's the type of food that people just get to show on social media. And she's attached a picture of what is essentially just someone wrapping layers of ice cream around and you hold it in your hand like a burrito. Looks pretty disgusting. Is that cotton candy? Kind of looks like it. But I guess the point is, and I thought it would be worth commenting, there are foods that are clearly awful but just look really good on camera. And we have personally eaten some of those <laughs> foods. <laughs> like what, Ben? <laughs> Okay, Expose I don't want us. to call anyone specific out, but remember when we were in Brooklyn with Rob and Corinne? Just call them out. <laughs> <laughs> They've made a lot of videos on yeah. like trying to remake Instagram worthy foods. And sometimes they're they're good. It's not like it's all bad. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty obvious when like we went to like that bagel spot and it was like, get the Spider Man bagel. It's just a bagel. They dyed like yeah. red and blue. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is And the cream cheese or whatever was on the inside was tasted like vanilla birthday cake frosting. Well, I think that was just the cream cheese Rob chose. Oh, maybe. <laughs> he chose like <laughs> the version for six-year-olds. Yeah. But like we all, like we had a bite of each other's just to taste the flavors. And after like one bite of each of them, I was like, I cannot <laughs> eat this anymore. Sick like, already. It's like a, like 10 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that was and the first stop. And I feel stop. like disgusting. Oh, let's wash that yeah. down with a unicorn latte. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I generally agree these sort of Instagram worthy foods are typically abominations. And sometimes I think a good argument against them is that th there's a lot of waste involved in creating them because oftentimes they don't really taste good or they're made with a lot of like food coloring preservatives that the creator is just trying to get a picture of and then they're throwing the rest out. So that's just social media life reality for you, I guess. A lot of it is kind of for show and who knows what's really being eaten. And sometimes I wonder that yeah. about all those like cake, uh, cake cr creators. Like what happens to people who are baking like eight foot cake? Yeah. And this isn't just where like does online the cake creators, go? like any baking shows and stuff yeah. like that. Where do you think those, when it's like, I'm the cake boss, I'm building a giant cake that probably tastes terrible because fondant is always bad and that's how they get fondant. it to shape. 
Sorry, yeah. it's a funny word. Um, but with Cake Boss, uh, like the one on TLC, at least he had a huge following that was always seemed to be lined up. This is like years ago. I don't know what it's like today. Um, where people would line up and they'd like give pieces of the cakes that he'd made. So they, they were able to give that away because there was just a pu- such a public presence and everyone knew where his shop was. I don't think that's the case for a lot of like YouTubers or online influencers making cakes. They're not just like giving it away to people lining up at their uh, commercial store because I don't think that's how they run it. Well, he's not running a store by he, just giving he was, away. Though. No, he had like a shop. Well, yeah, to sell baked goods, not to give away the giant cake he made for his TV show. No, but I also saw them doing that. Maybe it was just like one episode. Sorry, I didn't... Maybe you have followed the cake boss closer than I have. This is like eight years ago. Maybe it doesn't... It's not a thing anymore. No, okay. You you bring up a valid point. Like any sort of baking show, whether it's on television or the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would really question like what Rosanna Pansino is doing with all those cakes. She's definitely not eating them all. (laughs) She is a tiny person. Yeah. Uh, from Zippy. Am I saying that right? It's T Z I P I. Is it like Taziki? Tazippy? What do you think? How do you, is Taziki the right way to say Taziki? Satziki? I don't know. I actually have no idea. <laughs> Uh, anyway, when people use hummus as a dip or eat it with yogurt, it drives me insane. Hummus is eaten with a pita and a pita only. What say you, Ben? So this is, uh, apparently we're talking to the hummus police over here. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> Regular. You're being arrested. I'm not going to tell people, uh, uh, you know, the, the main thing to me is like they're eating uh, real traditional hummus. I can get behind policing what is and is not hummus when you have abominations like chocolate hummus <laughs> and up. gingerbread hummus and, and those absolute freak shows. <laughs> that but, sounds good. But uh, uh, I, I agree hummus is best eaten with pita. But I've already established I will eat hummus directly with a spoon. And I can get behind the idea of dipping vegetables in hummus. It's not my preferred method of consumption. But it would be a great way for you to start eating vegetables. But it would purely be as an excuse to, uh, like if I'm using a carrot to scoop hummus, I'm just trying to get as much hummus as possible on the carrot. And I don't really even want to put the carrot in my mouth. So I would rather just suck the hummus off the carrot. So you use... You can use pita or a vegetable as a vehicle by which to eat the hummus. Mm-hmm. But you prefer to just eat the hummus directly with no vehicle. No, no. I, I think the pita is good in compliments. It's a good mouthfeel to have both pita and hummus in your mouth. I might be inclined with a police officer of hummus zippy over here. zippity doo <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, from Grace Turchich. As a kid, my mom always fed me applesauce mixed with cottage cheese, and I never thought it was strange until I brought it to school and someone said it looked like puke. Well, I'll just say, just because something looks like puke doesn't mean it's bad. It might mean it's bad, though. No, <laughs> because there's I eat a lot of like oats mixes, and I'll mm-hmm. make combos, and does it look soggy and weird? Yes, mm-hmm. but does it taste amazing? absolutely sure you shouldn't just write something off because it looks unappetizing like first of all ice cream looks boring and just like does it melty and weird like (laughs) ice cream does not actually look good if you just look at like vanilla plain ice cream and it's starting to melt like what is that it's turning into a soup there's nothing about that that looks good we've just kind of conditioned ourselves to think like oh it must taste good because we all know we generally like ice cream but applesauce and cottage cheese probably would look and taste disgusting. What is cottage cheese, by the way? Cheese that was on vacation? <laughs> I have no idea. What is cottage it cheese? It looks... Gr- I've never... I don't think I've ever tried cottage cheese. Is it like a skim milk that's like condensed? I'm assuming it is a dairy... Pro- All I know is it's super high protein. I'm surprised you've never looked into this. I knew- Is it like Greek yogurt? Because Greek yogurt, like plain Greek yogurt is uh-huh. very high protein and thick. I think now that Greek yogurt is sort of known as a very high protein dairy source, mm-hmm. it's much more common for people to eat that than cottage cheese. But like when I worked at a grocery store when I was a teenager, I worked with a guy who was like training to be a bodybuilder. And in the break room, he would always just be eating a giant tub of cottage cheese. But <laughs> and why, it was disgusting. But why cottage cheese over Greek yogurt? 
Greek yogurt wasn't really a thing back then. And I think cottage cheese is more protein per calorie than uh, Greek yogurt. The one thing I don't like about it, at least the last time I remember examining cottage cheese, was that it's textured like little lumps in it. Yeah. Whereas Greek yogurt is like nice and thick and voluminous and like (laughs) super thick and like pick it up with my spoon and it's silky but also rich. And I really like the texture of Greek yogurt, but not so much cottage cheese. Yeah. You know, I think most people think cottage cheese is gross. But if all you care about are those gains and hidden your macros. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one from Jenny Scrobus Rice. Uh, I used to eat peanut butter and potato chip sandwiches. Mm. Uh, now it's PB&J with chips on the side. But if some of the peanut butter and jam falls out, I scoop it up with a chip and eat it. Smart. I like this woman. So chips on sandwich is an uh, underutilized, underrated uh, technique. Mm-hmm. And I would say I, I wouldn't even think of peanut butter as the first example of this. But I think uh, just putting like a plain, not a plain, like just a a regular flavored potato chip. It doesn't have to be barbecue or ketchup or anything, but just like a salty potato yeah. chip gives a really nice consistency to a sandwich. For sure. Sounds good. All right. Good, nom good call, Jenny. Uh, from Julia, one time in high school, we tried fudge and queso. It's not as bad as you would think. What's, is queso cheese? Yeah, queso is like the, the nacho cheese, right? But what's, what makes it queso? Like, is it a spicy cheese? Maybe. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not confident enough to answer that question. Or is it like but, liquidy cheese? Like cheese whiz? Yeah, it's the kind of cheese you would dip chips in. Like, like salsa cheese? and oh, okay. queso, right? So it's like wet cheese that's liquidy <laughs> and like cheese. melted. Yeah, no, this sounds truly disgusting. And I think it's funny that she goes, it's not as bad as you would think. She's not saying it was good. She's defending she's, it, though. She's just defending that it's not as awful, but so maybe it, it's, it's still So it's still awful. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to try that one. Uh, all right, next one from Libby. Uh, I'll take my steak borderline burned to a crisp and served with Worcestershire sauce to dip the bites in. The last time I had steak at a restaurant was 15 years ago because the server looked at me like I was a serial killer for asking and I'm afraid of ordering it again. Uh, so, you probably should be ashamed of that. <laughs> right, because some <laughs> restaurants that are, you know, bougie with their steaks, they don't like taking requests from customers who ask for their steak to be well done or well, cooked like, more because they get insulted because that's not how you're supposed to eat the fancy meat or whatever. Well, it's kind of like going to, a, like, I know the customer's always right sort of thing. But well, it would be are. like, <laughs> are they though? Because it would be like going to a steakhouse and being like, can I get ketchup all over my steak? And it's just like so insulting I to the I don't think chef. it's the same thing because I really, like if I'd ever ordered a steak in my life, I do not want it close to raw at all. And when I would say like, can you, can you make this well done or at least like medium well done and they'd come back and it was like bleeding, I'd be like, no, please fix it. And they're like, this is how the chef recommends. I'm like, I don't care. That's not how I want to eat it. <laughs> Okay, I, I hear where you're coming from, and I won't call out the specific person, but we went to a steakhouse once with someone, and they saw on the menu they had like this dry aged, expensive, fancy steak available mm-hmm. as a special. And they ordered it, and they said, But I want it done well, not like medium well, I want it done well. And yeah. you could see the conflict on the server's face because <laughs> the server knows you might as well be getting their worst cut of meat. Does it if really just, matter? It does I mean, matter. I'm just not educated enough about steak And that's cuts. okay. You don't have to be. But it must be so frustrating to have someone come in by like, I want the $200 cut of your finest meat, but burn it to a crisp. Well, not, like, that's not crazy. not burning it. <laughs> no, but like, okay, whatever. We don't have to get into an argument about how well done a steak should be. But there is a wrong answer to this. The customer isn't always right. Well, no? then the customer ain't paying. We leaving. <laughs> All right, let's knock out a few more uh, from Orla May. Uh, my boyfriend and I were in a restaurant and he makes gelato with spicy chili sauce and it strangely works really well. What kind of gelato? Actually, that's a good question. Maybe if it's just like a plain lemon? No, that's no. Weird. A like, plain vanilla? Well, here's the So chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate chili. Chocolate that's chili a tea ice cream. Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> chocolate chili ice cream is definitely a thing. I think it depends on the flavor. But a spicy ice cream is actually really interesting. I've tried mm. that before. Yeah, so. Uh, you know what's a really good ice cream? What? It's like a bourbon ice cream that I didn't think I would like because I'm not really I into I made that like for tea. you. I used to yeah. make ice cream at home, yeah. Bourbon or like an Earl Grey tea, like a London Fog ice cream. Mm-hmm. <gasps> so good. 
I mean, that's no surprise. I would like that. Actually, that's a really good hack. If you have a little ice cream maker at home, or like maybe you just have who, a cylinder. Who has an ice cream maker there, at it's home? It's not then. super in common. Like Cuisine Art makes them where you just have like a, you have a cylinder you leave in the freezer. And then you have like just a small ice cream maker where you drop the cylinder in and it just cranks itself for like, I don't know, half an hour or 40 minutes, depending on how cold your freezer is. But one really good hack for making different types of ice cream is to steep the base you prepare uh, in like using tea. You can yeah. use tea to flavor the base of your you ice cream. You can use tea for everything. Endless possibilities there. <laughs> All right. From Jill House, uh, Midwestern combo to try chili and cinnamon rolls. It's warm, it's spicy, and it will change your life. <laughs> I actually kind of, I'm very intrigued by this. Because I think like the cinnamon warm flavor can work with like a spicy chili type thing. I like cinnamon rolls. Um, uh -huh. I don't like chili or no. anything spicy. Yeah, you don't like spicy I should have said all, that right? at the beginning. I'm, I really can't <laughs> do too spicy. I'm just, a, I have a boring palate. I mean, there's such thing as uh, non-spicy chili. Yeah, but it's kind of boring. It is. I mean, kind of you've boring. made it. No offense. I've tried like... <laughs> making chili that we can both eat before, and, and then it's you'll like, add hot sauce to and yours. And I just like dump. I really like hot sauce. Yeah, I can't do it. It's not that it upsets my stomach. It's just that it upsets my mouth, and then like my mouth is on fire, and it just hurts, and I can't enjoy food it for the next like mouth. hour. So from now on, if I eat food I don't like, I'm just gonna say it upsets my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mouth. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Chloe, I hate kale in salad or cooked. <gasps> Rude. C Chloe, I just have to tell you, it may be the case that you're just not preparing the kale properly. You need to massage the kale. You need to love the kale. You need to take care of the kale. You need you to be a good partner kale. to your kale. <laughs> or you just need to fry the shit out of it and make it Bake nice and the crispy. Kale <laughs> in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, olive oil, lots of garlic, salt and pepper, that, and then let them, really... let them get crispy. No, no, no. It's important. They got to get crispy little little okay. ends, and then you eat them like a chip. Okay, kale And chips. then you'll like kale. All right. You heard it here. Uh, from hashtag Mana's, uh, the amount of garlic in every recipe it's called for should be tripled. Absolutely agree. We basically follow we do that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love garlic. Wait, does that... Does that mean I'm a vampire or I'm trying to get rid of vampires? Next question <laughs> from Sarah's Nail Secrets. Cilantro, I hate it so much and it's on all the good food. Oh my God. This Did I write this? You, you fall into this camp, right? Because to some people, cilantro tastes like soap. It is You soap. are one of those people. It's soap. You recognize though that, that not everyone experiences that, right? I just think you guys are all living in an alternate dimension, really. And I'm living in the, the one dimension where it is actually soap and you guys are just eating it and saying it's normal. It's weird. This isn't some like supernatural thing though. There's a scientific explanation why some people have, yeah. is it the enzyme? There's some I, explanation I can't for remember, it, right? but I am one of those people where I'll eat the cilantro herb and it will taste like my mouth was rinsed with soap and then uh -huh. anything I Which eat. Which you experienced a lot as a child, I think. Yes, every time I swore, yes. <laughs> get my mouth washed. We went to a, uh, a cooking class with your sister once. Yeah. And it was like a Mexican themed. And at the very <laughs> beginning, the instructor goes, is anyone here uh, not like cilantro? <laughs> and Christine puts up her hand and she goes like, the, the lady is like, why would you come to this class? <laughs> why would you pick this night? <laughs> but I too, Sarah, have to say no cilantro whenever we've gone out and there's been a cilantro dish. Or if we're making a recipe that has cilantro on it, I just, just throw it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you compost it. But like, so what does it taste like to you? Oh, uh, it's kind of hard to describe is the it like flavor. It's pretty unique. No, I don't is even it like know. Mint? It is like a light, like herby flavor. Is it? Is it even good? Yeah, I like it. It it cuts the sort of. Uh... Is it like Clorox? <laughs> I, okay. Is it like lemons? We like... could talk about this after. What kind of soap then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, from Hump Day Adams, I eat a tomato like people eat apples, whole or in slices. Interesting. I've heard of this before, and I'm not mad at it because tomatoes are it's a pretty good vegetable, I guess. Well, tomato. So, like, you can get a tomato from the grocery store that's like pulpy and gross and not good, but like a really good tomato, maybe one you grew yourself, is totally something you could just take a big bite out of. But how can you bite it without it just squirting all over your face? Maybe it's worth the mess. That's maybe just sometimes weird. it's worth getting a mess on your face. Okay, that's. <laughs> stop next question. all right from madeline mcintosh i sympathize with ben's need to eat hummus right out of the tub because i do the same thing with tzatziki 
So that's We've got some hummus sympathizers. <laughs> we do. Like, these people exist. You are trying to force them to the recesses of so- that's society. That's not true. If it was your choice, we'd be banning these people off Twitter, I bet. No. I, <laughs> let me just say, I accept your love for hummus. I just question how much of it you eat at a time and don't balance with other foods. Because you're basically just eating a, like 800 chickpeas at once. Yep. That have been blended together. <laughs> like a baby it's like the people who eat applesauce still like a baby what you think babies eat, do babies eat hummus <laughs> no what i'm saying <laughs> hummus is made of what Ch- chickpeas and chickpeas uh, tahini, tahini garlic seven. olive okay. oil what? so it, it's meat. basically chickpeas so it's like you're eating chickpeas but blended up like a baby would eat apples oh. but blended up you said uh, like like a baby who doesn't have teeth mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, all right. Uh, from Kim Min, my boyfriend hates when food touches, specifically when it's savory food like mashed potatoes and sweet food like cranberry sauce. I love it when my food touches. You love your food touches. I make my food touch itself. <laughs> I massage stop, my food. Stop. I'll, you can you stop. don't want to hear me describe wanna... <laughs> my garbage bowls? No, not at all. Please stop. Uh, Paige Lee, I eat cream cheese out of the container like people do for peanut butter. First of all, do people do that for peanut butter? Yeah. People eat tubs of peanut butter? That's sure. worse than eating a tub of hummus. Peanut butter is like one little spoon is like 100 calories, right? Yeah, that's why people eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Sabotage. Eating a container, cream cheese out of the container. That's. I have never heard of just taking a scoop of cream cheese. Like I used to eat a lot of cream cheese on when I had bagels. I'd put like two bagels, big scoops yeah. of bagels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just eating it alone, like... To me, that sounds like if why not just eat a brick of butter? Yeah, I was. Yeah, it's kind of like someone saying, "I just like taking a bite out of sticks of butter." <laughs> Does anyone ever say that? <laughs> Maybe at the Iowa State Fair. Why do we always say that? <laughs> it's like the worst stereotype. Because they literally deep fry butter at the Iowa State Fair. They also have a husband. Do you remember when we briefly looked into this? Yeah. Want to say this? We. You were going to maybe do a Simply video if you could enter yourself into the husband calling competition at the <laughs> Iowa State Fair and just scream for, for me. I would have won. <laughs> I think For you sure, hands down. If the, post-COVID, they redo that. We should... But they wouldn't have let me win because I'm Canadian. Maybe. And we're not married, so it's not really so a husband you, I'm call. Scared. You're not my husband. Yeah. We're living in sin and I'm Canadian. <laughs> Disqualified. <laughs> All right. I love cheese and apple sandwiches, but my friend think it's weird. Is this a normal combo? It is a normal combo. That's normal. Enough. I used to love eating, very specifically, Granny Smith apple slices, the mm-hmm. green tart apple with aged white cheddar slices, like a nice thick slice. Just slap that onto the apple and eat it like a sandwich. Uh-huh. Mm, so good. Sounds good to me. Uh, Maria Hanrubia, dipping everything in tea. Honestly, I don't care if it's sweet or salty. I'll dip it in tea and love it. Have you ever heard of this before? I mean, I've dipped cookies, crackers, and things Have into you? tea. But this is kind of giving me an idea. What else could I dip in tea? You wouldn't dip vegetables in tea. That'd probably I don't be a stretch. think so, no. But anything that's the least bit bread-like? Yeah. Or what if you poured tea on your ice cream or something? That'd probably be good. And I think it would just melt it. <laughs> your hot tea yeah. no but like what if you had iced tea like an iced maple latte and put it on ice cream that'd be delicious i think you would put the ice cream in the glass like a float of, like it would be like a float you put the ice cream in the tea not the like an ice cream tea float yeah mm, okay. that could be good i have an idea for dessert <laughs> but what wait, wait what have you dipped in tea then just cr- like crackers cookies like cookies. any yeah if i had like a chocolate chip cookie i would dip it in my tea all right that might be a a positive one to end on maybe a good idea i feel like a lot of these are people think they're alone in these opinions they're not like some of them aren't even that controversial like apples and cheese you know Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah there are plenty of people who enjoy that you pineapple pizza people you know i think you're wrong but you have a community of people who support your life choices mint people that's my kind of people yeah oats people tea people (laughs) I'm your people. <laughs> You're out there. All right. Apologies to Rob and Corinne from Threadbanger. We're going to have them on to talk about Instagram-worthy foods and food versus pin versus man versus woman versus food. 
But they added too much uh, charcoal to make everything black, so we couldn't uh, have them on today. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> black pizza, black toast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we should talk to those guys. I haven't talked to them in a bit. We'll have them on the podcast when the world resets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you're not too hungry. But uh, I'm pretty it, hungry now. It is Taco What's for lunch? Tuesday. Do you want to have tacos? Maybe tonight? we should have some tacos. I'm on down. Tuesday. Maybe we should have them right now and just pretend it's Tuesday. What if we mix them with something? What if every day is Taco Tuesday? What if you put peanut butter on your tacos? Maybe if it was ground beef, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning in. All we'll right, see you next buddy. Taco Tuesday. Thanks see so much for later. watching. Bye. <laughs>